Last week, we threw a bunch of AAA games at the new 14-inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro to see what would happen. And as expected, the M1 Pro performed well, reaching gaming performances never seen before on an Apple laptop. But the MacBook Air also impressed us when it was released last year, alongside the first-generation M1 chip, and it's still a bestseller for Apple. So that begs the question, how does the M1 Air compare to the new M1 Pro? Is the M1 Pro, which is twice as expensive as the M1 Air, worth its $2,000 price tag? This is Lloyd from Mac Gamer HQ, and today we're comparing the new 14-inch MacBook Pro, powered by the new M1 Pro chip, with the 13-inch MacBook Air, powered by the first-generation M1 chip. This time around, we'll be focusing on four games, Total War Warhammer 2, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, F1 2017, and Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Every one of these games has a handy in-game benchmark, which will allow us to precisely compare performance between our test machines. We'll be testing using the following. A base 14-inch MacBook Pro featuring an 8-core CPU, 14-core GPU, and 16 gigabytes of unified memory, and our 13-inch MacBook Air, which is the base model featuring an 8-core CPU, 7-core GPU, and 8 gigabytes of unified memory. The first game we'll test this time around is Total War Warhammer 2, arguably the most popular Total War available on the Mac. Total War games are known for large-scale battles with hundreds of soldiers on a single battlefield, each individually animated. The Warhammer entries add to that with orcs, dragons and magic spells being cast for one of the most demanding games on macOS. But how does the MacBook Air M1 do? Total War Warhammer 2 doesn't have a native M1 version yet which means this is the Intel version running through Rosetta 2. Don't know what Rosetta is? Rosetta 2 is a translation process that enables an M1 Mac with Apple Silicon to use apps built for Intel based Macs. On medium settings and 1200p resolution, the M1 Air runs the game at a solid enough 31 frames per second. The 14-inch M1 Pro, on the other hand, can run it at 65fps, which is more than double the performance. If 31fps on the M1 Air doesn't sound high enough to you, when running the game at 900p resolution, the M1 Air can run it at 50fps. With that resolution, the M1 Pro can run the game at 99fps, which is again roughly double the performance. Next up is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, one of the games we used to benchmark the M1 Pro chip last week. Despite being a great, well-optimised port from Feral Interactive that uses the Metal API, the game lacks a native ARM version, which means it also requires Rosetta 2 to run on M1 Max. It remains a demanding game, especially on the M1 Air. With graphics set to medium presets and 1200p resolution, the M1 Air runs the game at 23fps. The 14-inch M1 Pro, on the other hand, can run it at 52fps, which is again more than double the performance. On the M1 Air, you can lower the settings for a more acceptable performance. We'd usually expect around 30fps for a decent gaming experience. When running the game at 900p resolution, the M1 Air can run Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 33fps, which is about good enough. At those settings though, the M1 Pro can hit 72 frames per second. While you're here, be sure to check out our native M1 gaming benchmark page which includes links to all of our benchmarks we've performed so far. You can find a link in the description below. F1 2017 is a game you'll rarely see benchmarked around here, and that's too bad because even though it's a few years old, it's still one of the best looking racing games available on Mac. Its rosters may be outdated, but just look at it. F1 27 features top notch graphics and an excellent driving experience. As before, the game doesn't have an M1 native version, which means it is again an Intel game running through Rosetta 2. Still, as a port from Feral Interactive, it makes great use of the Metal API and can be considered a top-notch Mac port. With graphics detail set to medium and 1200p resolution, the M1 Air runs the game at an impressive 50fps. The 14-inch M1 MacBook Pro can run it at 70fps, which is better, but the difference between the two machines is not nearly as big as for other games we're testing. When running the game at 900p resolution, the M1 Air can run it at an impressive 59fps, whereas the M1 Pro can run it at 82. Either way, performance is good enough for 1200p, so there's not really any reason to lower those settings. By the way, if you'd like to see us test a specific game on our M1 Max, drop a comment below. Even better, you can join our Discord server which exclusively covers Mac games. Finally, Deus Ex Mankind Divided is the last game we'll test today. Mankind Divided has always been a challenging game to run on a Mac. In fact, it could barely run on the vast majority of Intel Macs, largely thanks to its nature as a first-person immersive sim, meaning objects can be picked up and moved, putting plenty of strain on the CPU. Our M1 machines definitely do a better job, but performance remains limited. With graphics set to medium and 1200p resolution, the M1 Air runs the game at limited 24 frames per second. 
The 14-inch M1 Pro can run it at 53 FPS, which is again more than double the performance, with numbers close to that of Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We're running the game at 900p resolution, the M1 Air can run Mankind Divided at 35 FPS, whereas the M1 Pro can run it at 71. So, is the M1 Pro worth double the cost of the M1 Air? The numbers of themselves say yes. For the majority of the games tested, you can expect that the M1 Pro at least doubles the performance of the M1 Air. But buying decisions are much more complicated than that, and let's be honest here, if you're looking for a pure gaming machine, you'll always be better off with a Windows laptop. That much is clear. But Macs are so much more than that. We choose Macs for plenty of reasons, and in many ways, playing games on a Mac is essentially an added bonus. If your work or daily usage requires high performance, then it's obvious. Go for the M1 Pro. The computing and graphical power of the M1 Pro is indisputable. Video editing, for example, is a breeze with these machines, so much so that it's hard to believe that they can compete with high-end workstations. If you're just looking for a laptop for normal day-to-day -day tasks, the MacBook Air is a more affordable machine. So should you get the M1 Air or the MacBook Pro with M1 Pro? If you're gaming, go Windows. But if you're looking for the added grunt to power your creative projects, it's well worth springing for a laptop packing the new M1 Pro chip. Next up, we'll be taking a look at 4K gaming on the M1 Pros and see whether the hardware's up to it. Thanks for watching.